In a previous lecture, we looked at the apical four-chamber view of the heart. Okay, now we're going to look at the five-chamber view, and this is not much different. Okay, but there's a different, there's some different structures we can see, and we'll look at those here. So in this view, again, we want the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. We want to put the transducer similar to the apical four-chamber view. Okay, so near the point of maximum impulse or apical impulse, which is right here at the apex of the heart. We want to direct the transducer to three o'clock so right here at three o'clock remember this would imagine a clock this would be six this would be nine this would be 12. okay so at three o'clock here we have the transducer in this region notice the markers are oriented in that direction okay so the markers towards the three o'clock transducers at the apical impulse and what we do is from that apical four chamber view all you want to do is tilt the transducer towards the patient's left hip okay this is the left side of the patient this is the right side so bring it down towards the patient's left hip which would be down here so as you can see this arrow kind of pointing down into that direction the patient's left hip and until you can see the aortic valve uh, starting to appear okay and we'll look at what we see in this view so the depth we can keep between 14 and 18 centimeters similar to the apical four chamber view and obviously that can change based on uh, the patient so what do we see in this view okay so we have our three different depictions here we have that cartoon depiction on the left side we have the unlabeled image in the middle and on the right we have the labeled image okay so three different uh, views that will hopefully help you uh, see what's going on here so notice that we wanted to bring the aortic valve into place okay and the aortic valve is here sitting in the center okay so here's the aorta actually this is the aorta here and then you have the valve and you're pretty much seeing this left ventricular outflow track okay the lvot so that's the left ventricular outflow track the aortic valve and you're seeing the aortic root and where we get that five chamber the fifth chamber is essentially the aorta okay that valve the root and the outflow tract so that aorta is that fifth chamber you can also see the left atrium you can see the right atrium the left ventricle and right ventricle okay so if we were to label these notice that the left ventricle is the one closest to the transducer remember the transducer is right here this here in blue this is the marker there's the marker in yellow the transducer is here at the top so we're seeing the left ventricle okay notice it here as well you have the right ventricle you have the right atrium you have the left atrium okay and then in the center you have that aorta in the aortic valve so the three valves that you can see in this view are the ones between the atria and the ventricle so the av valves as well as um, the aortic valve okay so let's look at those valves right here quickly so we have the mitral valve between so here's the left ventricle and the left atrium and then we have the mitral valve here okay and then we have the right atrium and the right ventricle and then here we have our tricuspid valve okay so notice the tricuspid valve the mitral valve and then the aortic valve sitting right in between as the left ventricle goes out to the aorta okay is the aortic valves between them so hopefully that makes sense so again that fifth chamber is the aortic root you're pretty much seeing so this is similar to the apical four chamber view but we get the additional uh, visualization of the left ventricular outflow tract, aortic valve, and the aortic root. Okay, so go back to the apical four chamber view and take a look at that, and you'll see what uh, what the difference is. Okay, now note that the left ventricle, the right ventricle, left atrium, and right atrium are foreshortened in this view. Okay, so those four chambers are foreshortened. So I want to uh, point that out. Now, what we want to assess here is we can look at and visualize the mitral valve and tricuspid valve, and we can look at the motion and if there's any evidence of regurgitation at the aortic valve, okay? So right there in the center, we can see that, okay? So one thing to note. All right, so let's review what we discussed before we end here. So again, patients in the left lateral decubitus position, what we wanna do is put the transducer at the apical impulse, direct the marker towards three o'clock, similar to the apical four chamber view. 
And from the apical four chamber view, what you want to do is now tilt the transducer tail towards the patient's left hip until the aortic valve appears. Again, the depth can be similar, 14 to 18 centimeters, and you can adjust as needed. Assessing this, remember the five chamber, that fifth chamber is that aorta, the aorta, okay? And we can see the left ventricular outflow tract, aortic valve, and aortic root. And that's what differs uh, from the apical four chamber view. Remember that the four chambers are foreshortened in this view, and we can assess three different valves here, the mitral tricuspid, and we can look for any the motion and if there's any evidence of aortic regurgitation at the aortic valve, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay so this is our website and what you'll notice is that if you go to the ekg course here okay you'll find stuff that's separate so notice that we have a number of topics practice material lectures a way for you to contribute and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another hundred more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um, i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available I had help with uh, my colleague Dr. Peter Noseworthy who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it so this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful so go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material so uh, we don't really make much off it it's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care that's why we do this and we love doing it so thank you so much for your support um, if you have any questions just leave them below and we're happy to answer them all right have a great day